he was with, uh, he was, he's in the Air National Guard now, isn't he? Uh, my husband's actually retired now, but he served uh, for 21 years, uh, active duty and in the Guard. He was an A-10 pilot, um, so he flew combat missions in Iraq uh, and has served, served our country. But now he's a small business owner. Yeah, that's so wonderful. He, after getting out of the military, he started his own business. He has a landscaping and snow plowing business, so he's got about 20 employees. And so I also had the experience of watching him start a small business, working with him, helping him start a small business. So it's made me very, very sympathetic to um, our really our entrepreneurs, our small business owners, and how hard they work every day. So Joe, unbeknownst, unbeknownst to Joe, he's become the um, go-to person. He has been. He has uh, taught me first of all how hard uh, people work to start their own business. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you how do you finance it? How do you uh, every day make it happen? And also made me appreciate that a lot of the things that happen in Washington on the regulatory and tax front, we've got to be very careful about those things because they can really hurt our small businesses. The aisle. How do you feel about, first of all, the funding uh, of the, our Department of Defense? How do you feel about that? Well, I, you know, I do, it's been a privilege to serve on the Armed Services Committee and, you know, my husband's a, a veteran. Um, you know, I think that we've, these automatic cuts uh, through sequestration that went in place um, by the way, I voted against this, um, that went in place, that we're they're diminishing our military. Uh, to me, if we continue down that path, we are going to have uh, the smallest army, uh, the smallest air force, the smallest navy, um, then going back to almost World War II. Mm -hmm. And to me, as you look at the threats we're facing from ISIS, mm -hmm. uh, Russia, the invasion of Ukraine and their aggressive behavior, obviously Iran, and uh, just recently testing ballistic missiles and obviously their nuclear program. So many threats that we face. This is not a time to uh, really undermine, diminish our military. And yet we have been doing that. Mm -hmm. Without security, you can't have prosperity. Without security, you can't have freedom. It is the foremost responsibility under our Constitution, and we can't continue to shrink the military and expect that we can defend this nation. Right, and I think so many times I was privileged, as you know, to serve overseas when I was ambassador to Hungary, and I noted how important the armed services were yes. to, to diplomacy because many of the civil people on the civil side of defense are there for years sometimes, oh, and they absolutely. really get to know the community. They do. And they understand the underlying cultural issues, uh, sometimes better than our State Department uh, uh, colleagues, yeah, because the they're there Yeah, I think people in longer. Eastern Europe right now are very mm -hmm. concerned with the Russian aggression right. and what Putin's been doing. Right. And there's no doubt that these relationships that we have with our allies are critical. And, and it calls into question uh, our are our colleagues and our, our, our relatives, so to speak, in Europe doing enough, our allies, to defend themselves? Are they adding yeah. enough with NATO? I mean, are they... Well, we've always been, you know, NATO, unfortunately, the, the, uh, our allies have not funded NATO in the way that they should. Uh, we have, and yet NATO is very important. Mm -hmm. It seems like so many of uh, the discussions have to do with isolationism or we should be, or nation building, and, and it's really not any of those things, is right. it? I mean, we're really no. not talking about any absolutes here. We're talking about being the most powerful country still well, in the world. I think we have to understand who we are. Mm -hmm. We are the most powerful country in the world. Um, we are a leader that can bring people together like no other country in the mm -hmm. world. American leadership is indispensable because what is happening in Iraq and Syria, um, and what they, what this group, um, ISIS, is inspiring. Obviously, we've seen in Brussels, in Paris, uh, other attacks that they have inspired, and obviously in our own country, in San Bernardino, um, this is a real threat to us. Mm -hmm. And I think collectively, uh, America needs to show the leadership of bringing people together to defeat this terrorist group. So you believe, you are a firm believer that we can defeat ISIS? I, I, I think that we have to. Mm -hmm. um, it, we have to. We cannot continue to see these terrorist attacks and have radical Islamist terrorists continue to attack our allies in Europe, mm -hmm. to continue to aspire to attack us, to continue to inspire people here to self-radicalize, mm -hmm. to commit acts in this country. I'm not saying we're going to do this alone. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't. Mm -hmm. We absolutely should be uh, working with our allies. We absolutely should be calling on the Arab nations as well. 
Um, but who is going to bring all these countries together but for us? Mm -hmm. I don't see it. I think the other issue that, that keeps cropping up is this, this agreement made with Iran. Yes. That, that people are very, I won't say as sharply divided because I keep hearing really un, you know, unkind things about the arrangement. And I really would love to know your thoughts about it. Um, this was a very bad agreement. I did not support it. Uh, this is an agreement that is going to allow Iran to keep its nuclear infrastructure, an agreement uh, that I thought the inspection regime was totally insufficient. And then at the last minute, the uh, administration caved on the issue of ballistic missiles and conventional arms to Iran. And now we are seeing already um, something that I have focused on, Nancy, which is in October, Iran tested ballistic missiles. In November, they tested ballistic missiles. In the last two weeks, they have twice again tested ballistic missiles. And this is of deep concern to Israel. It's a deep concern to us because they have, uh, they're intending to develop ICBMs that can hit the United States of America. Well, it's no secret that it's stormy in the Republican Party. And when we come back, I want to talk to Senator Ayotte about unity issues within the party.